section four of the Canadian Electrical Code is so important. It's important because it has the part where you calculate how much current you can be carrying in your wires and in your cables. It's really important to not carry too much current because as you know, carrying too much current is going to overheat the wires, causing a lot of problems with um, uh, fire and equipment damage and, um, and safety. So 4-004, section four, rule four, ampacity of wires and cables, so very important, but so difficult to learn. So I'm summarizing here for you. Here is what you're doing in 4-004. It looks really complicated, but we just have to step back and say, what are we doing? And then we have to do that step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven. We have to look at the tables and uh, determine uh, our, our correction factors and everything. And we just take it step by step and you will get to the maximum amount of current that you can uh, carry, which is called ampacity in the Canadian Electrical Code. So first, you're going to determine the insulation temperature rating. So you will know what type of insulation you need to use for the job, and there is a certain temperature that is associated with that rating. Then you're going to determine the temperature rating of the equipment termination, the, ter the terminating point on the equipment at both ends of that conductor. Then you're going to determine which material of the conductor you have. And typically you will know whether you're working with copper or whether you're working with aluminum. Then uh, you consider how it's installed. Is it in free air? You can probably carry more current in it because it's going to cool. Is it in conduit? Is it in tubing? And then there's some derating factors based on how it's installed. And how many conductors? are in each of these at, when it's installed. And that matters to the heat that is generated. And third to last step is uh, you will get the, uh, uh, you will then from the, um, how it is installed and the number of conductors, you look at a table to say, here is the gauge size that you can use. Okay, so now you know your gauge size. Now it asks, well, where are you installing it? Are you installing it at a warm spot or are you installing it in a cool spot? Because of course, if you're installing this in a hot kitchen behind an oven, then, or a, you know, a, a fab shop or a, you know, near quenching or tempering equipment or something that is hot, then of course, even though you have that size, if you're putting it in a hot environment, it's going to heat up more. It's not, well, it's not going to be able to dissipate its heat as fast. Therefore, you have to apply a correction factor. And those correction factors correct for ambient from tables 5A and 5C. So that's all you're doing. You are, and you can make a little flowchart of this. You find your insulation temperature rating based on the insulation you want to use. You calculate, you make sure that you know the temperature rating of both sides of that of that cable, um, of that conductor, by knowing your equipment. Of course, you're working in copper or aluminum. And then you have to uh, specify, are you going to put it in some conduit or tubing, or does it sit in free air? How many conductors are going to be jammed in there, un unable to dissipate their heat? From there, you get the gauge. But you have to consider where you're mounting it. Is it in a hot environment? If it is, you need to derate according to table 5A or 5C. That's all we're doing in conductor sizing. And please comment below if you'd like some examples. I can go through a lot of example problems, probably 20 or 30 example problems for you of going through this calculation if that's helpful to you.